It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. It's the Spotlight Show. I'm Mark the Mark Martinez, and we are staying in Oklahoma one more time to wrap up 2021. And this is going to be a interview. Last week we had Malik Mayfield on. The week before we had Robin the Ref. And this week we have Luke Richmond. All part of what is known as, I, I guess I'm breaking the fourth wall. So I'm going to break the fourth wall a little bit because we said it a little bit on both of the other interviews. But this is the tribe. These are guys that ride together in NCWO. And they have a huge event coming up in McAllister, Oklahoma on January 22nd of 2022. Holy crap. That is legit like right around the corner. I don't even have, well... As of recording, I don't have my Christmas shopping done, but this is already past Christmas, so yay! I did good. Hopefully, if there's a if there's a wrap up show this week, you'll know if I did good or not. Uh, nonetheless, this is going to be uh, the time that we get to know who Luke Richmond is. Again, he is a tag team partner with Malik Mayfield, the cheer captain of professional wrestling, and they are the chosen influence. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear Luke's version about how they got together in his upbringing to get in professional wrestling. And now you guys know that I love the stories about how indie stars get in professional wrestling. Yeah, I'm out there. Guys, you know where to find us. We can be found on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, all, all those podcast places, we're there. Just type in Can't Crush Us Wrestling Podcast, you'll find us. Instagram, Twitter, and the Facebook, we're there. It's all at CanCrusher69. Guys, if you're an indie star, you'd love to be spotlighted in 2022. The books are filling up for January, so get on it. Send me an email at cancrusher69 at gmail.com or slide into one of my DMs and we'll hook you up. We'll schedule you and then you'll get to be part of this whole dumpster fire wrestling show that we here have here on Can Crushers. All right. You guys know what we have to do first. We have to tell you about all the cool stuff that Collar and Elbow has. You know, Al Snow and all of those people at Collar and Elbow, they have hats, hoodies, tees, all the great merch. I legit have my Dusty Rhodes one on. I have not worn it in a while. Pulled it out, getting ready just because it's just the way I feel. Head over, buy some stuff from Collar and Elbow. Use our promo code CANCRUSHERS. All one word, capital C and CAN. Capital C and Crushers, you'll save 10%, and then you'll get some cool-ass merch. We also have merch as well, Can Crushers merch. You love that big shield that we have? Yeah, you can wear that on your chest. You can have that on a cup. You can have a pair of leggings with it, uh, and there's more to come in the near future. Head over to our website. It's cancrushers69.wixsite, W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com backslash cancrushers. You'll see where you can order. Head over, buy some stuff, help support Can Crushers. That would mean the world to me. All right, this is the last interview of 2021, so let's dive into it. But here comes Al to tell you about his stuff. Wrestling, a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back to 
back to Can Crushers. You heard in the intro how excited I was to have the other half of Chosen Influence on the show today. And we'll get to all the topics that come with Oklahoma because, oh my God, there's been so many. But Luke, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? A lot better the second take, right? Uh, yes, sir. I throw myself under the bus, Luke. It's okay. Well, somebody had to do it. Glad you threw yourself <laughs> under instead of me throwing you under it. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, so you have a huge event coming up January 22nd in McAllister, Oklahoma, it is. And it's called Shaking It Up, where you and your tag team partner going for some titles, right? Uh, yes, sir. And this is actually our first time being an official tag team together so i'm really looking forward to that and just showing the world what chosen influence can do and just getting out there and doing what we do best and that's beating people for some titles so <laughs> yeah yeah excited to see that and i like how you made reference it's going to be you guys's first time actually tagging together when we had malik on last week uh, he was all about being your best friend. So can you tell me how this actually came about since you guys haven't had a match yet together? Right. So uh, I started training about a month before Malik did, and he came in. And, yeah, you know, we, we didn't hit it off right away. You know, I just kind of like, eh, who's this guy coming in? Like, and I always, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best and I don't need to be in a tag team with this guy, but Hey, at the end of the day, we started liking each other and, and uh, we just became best friends and just over time, we kind of like grew closer and closer together through the hard training days that we would go through. And we just kind of started clicking together and it, it just made sense in our heads to become a tag team. And I love the name. It's very uh, like ECW impact players to me, or, or it's not like get ready, get ready for hate. It's not like the bloodline or the, the good brothers or like this kind of like a uh, pushed fabricated name. It's a faction. It's the chosen influence. It, it's it to me, it has a ring of the four horsemen because Everybody in that stable, Ric Flair was the nature boy. You had the enforcer. You had Barry Windham, what was the, the tall drink of water. And then you had, like, kind of Tally Blanchard kind of doing his own thing every once in a while, which essentially that's what you guys can be, too. You can always have each other's back, you know, together as a tag team, going after titles. But if shit comes, you know, that you guys need to go one-on-one, -on -one, you're fine because it's all about the chosen influence. And yes, sir, I definitely agree with you on that. It's definitely un unique, and it's not really forced. And honestly, you can blame uh, Malik for coming up with that name because he's very creative in that aspect, and it, and it just kind of clicks. <laughs> it, it, it does click. It, it does click, and I, I really love it. Um, it also, you know, you guys are polar opposites. Because he is the cheer captain of the world, and you are just gritty, down nose, ready to punch somebody in the face if they look at you wrong, right? Exactly, and that, I feel like that's why we're going to be one of the best tag teams. I don't want to say ever, but in Oklahoma, that's for sure. Uh, because he's got that high-flying attitude, and then I'm just in your face, ready to punch you in the face if you look at me wrong. I and I feel like it's going to work well together. So Yeah, I, I, I agree. So let's do a little bit of a rewind, as we like to do here on Can Crushers. Who introduced you to wrestling? Was it Aunt Jan, Uncle Joe, Mom, Dad? How did you find this when you were just a, a, a little sapling? Man, I want to say it was um, either my dad or my brother. They had it on the TV one day, and I just seen The Rock come out and made his entrance and he like stood on the corner ropes and raised his hand up and it was like oh wow i'm i'm hooked this is this is what i want to watch for the next however long my childhood is 
Oh, and into and continuing into adulthood as well, dude. It, yes, sir. Forty-four, yes, sir. you yes, stop with the sir thing. Oh my god, I, I feel like I'm the, <laughs> uh, like a, a governor or something. Um, it, it's in your blood now. Essentially, the rock sent his electrifyingness into you, and you were hooked since then, right? For sure, for sure, hooked ever since then. <laughs> so, who else did you kind of go towards because? Again, I'm going to be way off with my predictions. If The Rock is your number one, I didn't see that whatsoever. But go ahead. <laughs> Tell me who else that you love. Well, I, I enjoyed watching a lot of Kurt Angle's work and Brock Lesnar, Charlie Haas, and Sel Shelton Benjamin as well. Just that kind of like gritty amateur wrestling style background. Okay. All right. I I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait when it, when we get to the comparison, but uh, I might have one. I might have one. I was, I, I was horrible with Malik's. So uh, yeah. Um, why did you, why did you go there with the, with like the technical stuff compared to, you know, I'm going way back macho man or even like Rey Mysterio or anybody like that that likes high flying. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not, quite sure why i chose like the amateur technical style it's just always caught my eyes like oh wow that was some really good wrestling right there oh wow that's amazing move set right there okay i just kind of like the technical side for some reason which i in high school i was an amateur wrestler as well so that kind of lean me towards that as well well you just read my notes because that was the next thing that i was going to bring up because i knew that you were an amateur wrestler because there's stories about you being an amateur wrestler you're a pretty damn good amateur wrestler in high school as well weren't you yeah uh yeah give I yourself pat I yourself was... on the back <laughs> i try not to pat myself on the back because i never really won any state titles or anything in amateur wrestling but I don't think there was a time where I wasn't in the top 10 in my division. So, Yeah, you, you were pretty doggone good. Those are still out yeah. there. Those are still out there, so you can find those. Yeah, I bet you can. So, yeah, uh, Mom and Dad might be posting them, too. I don't know. When, when did you, you know, you, you get out of high school and you're out of uh, amateur wrestling and everything, when did you know that this was what you were going to do, and where did you make your first phone call? Because there's a million different wrestling training camps, organizations out there. So kind of tell me that process that was going through your head. Well, I, I kind of knew early on that this is what I wanted to do for a living. I just kind of strayed off the path a little bit after high school. I kind of went and worked in the oil field and kind of made a little bit of money there and then it was like got real depressed with myself and got kind of overweight and it was like the pandemic came around and I was like man this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life I, I don't want to be worrying if I come to work on Monday if I'm going to be laid off or not I want to get in shape get lose weight I've lost probably 70 pounds after I got laid off from the oil field in 2020. And um, I decided, hey, I'm going to message a bunch of people on Facebook and see if there's any pro wrestling schools around where I live in follow Oklahoma. And uh, I came across somebody, and then they mentioned me to Barricade. Um, yep. He runs All-Star Pro up in OKC. And he messaged me and was like, hey, I, I heard you were interested in training for pro wrestling. Uh, we, we train here in Bethany uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You just come down and have a tryout and we'll see if you can handle this or not. <laughs> I was like, all right, I, I'll be there. So I drove two and a half hours to train and I started doing that twice a week. And I did that for about a year before I started wrestling. So so much to pull out of that. So let me start first by saying uh, you worked in the oil field, which is no cake job within itself. That is legit beating your body up day in and day out. And I know professional wrestling is too, but professional wrestling's fun. 
This is yeah. just beating yourself up to go home, go to sleep, wake back up five hours later because I know you guys put in stupid hours, you know, yeah. consistently. So I understand, not that I am one, I'm a garbage man, but I, I know that there's so much time away from your family. So that was that part of it too? I know you're a youngster, but I mean, you know, you're looking down the road and, you know, family time, even mom and dad, uh, was that a huge part of it? Because you're also on the road too, right? Yes. Uh, so I was uh, doing a, a 24-hour call job. So I'd, I'd get home for like an hour and then I'd be like, hey, uh, we need you back out at the rigs. It's like, oh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll be there. <laughs> and uh, I do have a wife, so that had a lot to do with it. It's like, man, I, I barely get to see my wife. I want to at least be home every night to sleep in the same bed with my wife. You know what I mean? No, I do. I, yeah, that's, I essentially do because if I wasn't home every night to sleep in my bed with my wife, I would be getting phone calls all the time. Where are you at? What are you doing? Did it, did it. So yes, uh, just precursor. Those still come even after yes. 15 years of marriage, they still come, <laughs> but they're good, right? You miss yeah. And that's nice that you have the, the wife and you miss her and everything. So yeah, uh, no kids yet. Um, we do have a kid on the way, so. Oh, congratulations. I, I see. I did not know that, but okay. I digress. You called it, so. Yeah, I digress. Uh, so getting out of that, you know, so you were essentially laid off in, in the oil field and then you just like, all right, I, I'm going to go into wrestling. You go to, uh, OKC and how was your first day? Because I've heard from many people that they just want to blow you up. I've never been through that first day. Did they just try to kill you to see if you actually had the passion for wrestling? Well, see, I, I'm not sure if they were trying to blow me up or whatever, but like we went through some drills, some like basic stuff. And, uh, they're like, wow, like he hasn't even broken a sweat. What you sure you haven't wrestled before? I'm like, no, but I, I did amateur wrestling in high school, so I mean it's kind of like similar like some of the blow up drills are kind of similar to the amateur wrestling blow up drills, so Yeah. And then you had the strength of, you know, stuff from the oil rigs and, and everything. So what was yeah, your hardest yeah. part of training then? Um Malik still hates the ropes, is what he says. Man, so honestly, my hardest part was uh, just kind of like coming out of my shell and showing the um, emotions of everything. For some reason, I just couldn't get that part. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I From the clips and stuff I've seen, I couldn't imagine that. I, I would not imagine that you were um, a shy little child, <laughs> essentially still stuck in <laughs> your big man's body. Yeah, so the crazy thing is, is when I've had my first match, those emotions just came out of nowhere. They just kind of clicked as I walked out to the ring. I was like, wait, maybe I should do this. <laughs> it yeah. just kind of went when it was time. Do you still get to your, your butterflies? This is a setup question, by the way, to throw you under the bus uh, or to say yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely do, because in my opinion, if you're not nervous, then you don't care. That's just how I feel about it. Right. It's a different crowd each night. It might be the same people, but it, you don't know what they did that day. They, they could be pissed off, and you have to get them unpissed off. Or they could be happy, like crazy happy. You need to get them you know, to cloud nine. Yeah, you're right. You, you have to have those jitters, because you don't know what you're going out there as. For sure. And you, you don't know what that crowd has gone through that week or that day or what they're going through. So you just have to go out there brand new and act brand new with them and just give them a show, basically. Yeah, for sure. So, Luke, uh, we're sitting here talking all about you. Where where did you come up in? This is where I fail miserably or I get at least something right. Where did you come up with who you are in, in, in kind of – everything that you have engulfed into your character. Now, I'll pause you because, as I said, I did see you as a, you know, in-the-face type of guy. So, yes, I say my comparisons, I got Brock Lesnar, okay? 
I have Bret Hart because he's very technical. Mm-hmm. But then I threw in, you know, one that I'm probably completely off with. And I don't know. I threw in Edge as well. I didn't. I don't know if you are an Edge fan because he's always got that. And this is actually from the promo pic that you sent me. He's always got that mm-hmm. stone cold face that it, you don't know if he's ready to kill you, if you're ready to go have drinks. So I, I took <laughs> Edge from your promo picture that you sent me because I'm like, man, he just looks pissed off all the time, and Edge instantly came to me. Right. I, I definitely am a fan of Brock Lesnar and Bret Hart. It's like I'm I'm kind of using some things with from him as well, and then Edge. I I did love watching him growing up, so that there might be some some Edge flair in there a little bit. You know what I mean? So I'm not way off then. So I'm I'm around at least better than what I did the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you. You were kind of a little far off on my tag team partner in Malik. So <laughs> yeah, thanks. He threw me right under the bus for that too. <laughs> I had to, man. I just had to. Yeah. So tape study now. Like, who are you watching tape study now, and how far back do you go? Because I think your persona could pull from, again, I'll bring him up, like Telly Blanchard from the 80s, or even mm-hmm. farther back, like a Harley Race, before he was WWF King Harley Race, like when he was the hard-nosed son of a bitch from St. Louis Harley Race. Yeah, I'll definitely keep that in mind when I go to watch some film. But here recently, I've been watching a lot of uh, Kurt Angle, uh, Shawn Michaels, and uh, a lot of Charlie Haas. Um, for some reason, uh, I've, been, I've been watching a lot of film lately. So, well, th- th- There's nothing to hang your head about that. That's great. All, all perfect people, you know. I, I never waved Charlie Haas's flag, and I don't know why, because the more and more people I talk to really love him. Did you sit through a seminar with him? Do you know him personally? Because you uh, you mentioned him a couple times, and now I feel like a big jackass. So, see, Ben, uh, so my first uh, four matches, my fourth match, it was with Charlie Haas in, at Red River Wrestling. Oh. And man, I learned so much from that match. He's he's just a I want to say he's one of the greats at this. He's just so damn good. Was and that, uh he did actually do a seminar with All Star Pro as well, so Did he well that's that's what that was my question. Did he pick you to have that match with the, after the seminar? See, um because I know that I'm happens not, sometimes. I'm not entirely sure. Well, the we had um, our match, and then we had the seminar. Like I want to say it was two months after the match. Oh, so. okay. I mean, normally, sometimes when they do them up around here, they have like the seminar at like ten o'clock in the morning, and then the show is like at seven o'clock at night. And if it was, uh, I don't know, James Ellsworth, so to speak, he he would be like, all right, I I want to do a match that night, and I'm going to do it against Boom Mark, and it, it would never be me, but you know what I mean. Right. Well, um, I actually did a Good Brother seminar in Sherman, Texas. That was and... coming up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did and you so get to I, work I, with them? Uh, no, I didn't get to work with them. But so I, I did the seminar, and um, the ro- the promoter that held the seminar, um, I guess he liked what he saw, and then uh, D- Drone Daniel Griffey, um, he's actually talked to the promoter as well on my behalf and so i guess they decided hey maybe let's bring this guy in and um they put me in against charlie haas in the main event and it was my fourth match ever so it was like oh wow this is a good step up that's pretty crazy was he kind of like your first uh, since you're patting him in the back and giving all the love to Charlie Haas you possibly could. Um, sorry, Luke. Uh, was sorry. he like your first Legends match then, essentially, that you uh, that yeah, people know? Sure. Yeah. Yes. It was definitely the first name that I got to work with, so. That's probably a better way of putting it than I said, yeah, so. Yeah, good talking, Luke. Um, 
All right, let's dive into some of this personal stuff with, again, another one, uh, another person from Oklahoma. And let's start it off, for the love of God, to keep this whole Oklahoma shit show going. How do you eat your cereal? Because that's what everybody wants to know anymore on Can Crushers. Man. So you definitely got to put the milk first. You're, you're, you're insane. You're a goddamn soci- uh, sociopath. Why do you put the milk first? Because here's the thing. You got to – I measure out my food. Of so... course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> Your poor wife. Go ahead. Yeah. So I measure my stuff out. So I, I measure out a cup of milk, put it in the bowl, and then I put the amount of cereal that you're supposed to put, which is usually about a, a cup or so. And it's got to be Fruity Pebbles. I, I If I'm eating cereal, I normally don't eat cereal, but if I'm eating cereal, it's got to be Fruity Pebbles. All right. Somehow you've just saved yourself. I don't know if you're just trolling me now because for the last <laughs> two shows, I've told everybody and everybody knows in life that Fruity Pebbles is my favorite. But are you trolling me or do you? I will find your wife and ask her. I will find her. If you're trolling me, Luke, I hate you completely. You Tell me. No, I'm not trolling you, man. It's it's. In my opinion, it's the best cereal. I normally don't eat cereal, though, so... Okay. But if I do eat cereal, it's it's got to be Fruity Pebbles. You're still a sociopath for putting the milk. Why do you put the milk in first? I understand you measure shit out and all of that, but don't you want the glaze of the milk over the cereal? But here's the thing, like... Oh, man, it's just hard to explain. I don't know. It's That's just always been the way I've done it. It does make it soggy if you put the milk last, though, because of the air bubbles. How long are you waiting to eat your cereal? Well, like, how long does it normally take you to eat your cereal? A minute. A minute and a half. What? what, You pour your (laughs) milk in, and then you just start throwing it in your (laughs) mouth. If you're going to let it sit for 15 minutes to go take a shower or something, yes, it's going to get soggy. You're you're a lunatic. Do you did your parents teach you to make cereal that way? Man, uh <laughs> they actually did. So. Mom and dad, I'm sorry. Sorry because I'm sure they're going to listen to this. I, I apologize. Your whole family's <laughs> crazy. That's it. We're we're getting off the cereal conversation. I am not talking about cereal with anybody else from Oklahoma again. I, I don't care what they say. You just ruined it besides you, you loving Fruity Pebbles. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what else can we talk about to know more about Luke? Uh, are you a video gamer? Are you, do you just live in the gym anymore? You know, what What else? Or, or do you like to read uh, murder books or something? Because you're, you're messing with my head. See, I, I'm more of um, I, I did play video games for a while, and here recently I've stopped and just focused on my fitness and trying to get in better shape and kind of prolong life, I guess, as you would take it. Okay. Just live a healthier lifestyle. And and uh, I don't read more murder mystery books. Good. Um, Good. I don't think you need say, to. <laughs> I, I'm like a serial killer. They, um, Malik and... Um, Miss Vegas like to say I, I keep bodies in my trunk. Yeah. I, I don't even have a trunk. They're lying. <laughs> what, you, you don't have... So apparently you have a truck then because you have a bed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you have a tonneau cover with them all stuffed underneath the tonneau cover then, essentially. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. <laughs> Uh, when you do get time away from wrestling and, and fitness and everything, it, without getting way too much into your personal life, you know, just spending time with your family and just like hanging out is kind of your best relaxation days. Yeah, um, I I really love to watch movies with my wife. That's kind of our thing. We we pick a movie and watch it together, and we just enjoy each other. So, all right, so. This is going to be a horrible question. I'm either going to be like, oh, okay, he, he's changed his life, or you're 
going to scare the shit out of me all of a sudden. What type of movies do you and your wife like to watch? She likes to watch uh, romantic comedies, and okay. I just kind of like to watch horror films. <laughs> well, that's okay. That, yeah, horror films are... I, I thought you were going to be like... I, I like to watch documentaries on Hitler or so, you know, something. Yeah. That, right? Yeah, that that might be a little far stretch for me, but... Good, good. Because you were leading me to a path that I was like, oh shit, this guy, he, he's got really something into that of his truck that I'm worried about. <laughs> no, that's, that's more or less Malik. He, I mean, he plays GTA just to <laughs> murder people, so... We do. We do. I... I I did not disagree with that. That uh, after a rough day of cheer or garbage duty, you have to come home and take care of stuff like that. Man, I'm more of a stir- uh, storyline person. Are you really? Now you're you're really just being an asshole now because I said <laughs> that completely on Malik's show that we don't do storylines. Good, good. Apparently, do you do you know Busted Open with Dave Lagreca and Bully Ray and all those guys um, on Sirius Radio? You've heard uh, of yeah. it, at least. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Dave Lagreca just had a big beef with Thunder Rosa like her whole life, and she finally took care of business and speared them the whole through like a uh, I don't know pallet of cans or something. I feel that you're gonna be my nemesis all of a sudden for a while. Like I'm just going to <laughs> shit on you for the rest of the podcasts ever because you're completely just being that guy. I- I'm gonna reach out to Malik after I'm done talking to you and be like, if you guys set me up with Luke, I completely hate all of Oklahoma, all of it, everybody, even the Sooners and everybody can go to hell. No, man, I'm just being honest with you. Okay, okay, that that laugh scares me, though. That laugh scares me. Uh, down the wrong path, Mark. Um, so let's get it back serious again. And you, you've you been, you, you named a couple organizations that uh, you've been with and you've been to. But are, are you going to call ncwo your home now is that where you're going to transition or are you going to kind of be like a, a free agent and you'll still go to red river or wherever the world will take you uh yeah i, w- I would like to say i'm more of a free agent i mean NC- ncwo is nice and it's fun and it's very positive and everybody likes each other there and there's no drama or anything like that. It's a very good environment. I only live probably about 30 minutes away from the training center there. So I would like to say it's my home, but I also would like to say I'm a free agent. I, I want to travel and kind of expand and get better at wrestling and just work as many people as I can work. So, so a, a true indie star then that, you know, when you're home and NCWL calls, that of course that's like your your home base you'll always do something with them you know if if there's time but you wouldn't mind going to like OVW in uh, Kentucky or uh, our big one up here in Pittsburgh is IWC there's Imagine in like Altoona Pennsylvania so you're content doing the travel of yes, you know 10 hours sure. on the road for a hot dog and a handshake and come back home cuz that's essentially what it's yes. going to be for a while yeah, for a while it's going to be like that, but hopefully in the near future I can start making that money and traveling and wrestling and just making a living out of this. Yeah, and I, I wish you the best. I do. We're not done yet. but um, So do you have any tribe stories that you would like to, to release? Because Robin said you guys all just ride with your heads out the windows and you don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, we just kind of get to the shows we really haven't had those moments where it's like okay this is a fucking story I'm, whoops no that's all right you're good i've said that a couple times about you already so it's okay <laughs> it's like well this is a story but we really haven't had those opportunities yet we we need to get out and start traveling more together and going to more shows and just getting our names out there but yeah we just kind of get to the shows take care of business, and then hit the road home. Head back home. Where's your go-to food place to eat on the way home? Or are you guys those nerds that pack 
little sandwiches and everything and drive home. So I usually try and uh, pack something, but if I don't, my my go-to favorite is uh, either Subway or Buffalo Wild Wings because you can get the naked wings or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll give you Buffalo Wild Wings. Subway, eh, I'm over it. It's two pieces of meat on a piece of bread. I can make that at home. So Right. Yeah. Uh, so we went over your travel plans. What are some more goals for 2022? Have it be in Oklahoma, have it be, you know, more in Texas or Kansas or, you know, how big do you want to get, uh, because uh, let's be real and honest here. You're not tackling 50 States in a year. Right. Are you, <laughs> are, are, if you're good, I, I know you want to try, but I, uh, What's your realistic goal in 2022 to branch out? Um, I definitely want to get into Texas more and just kind of break into Texas and come become like a huge Texas star. And then if more states open up, they open up. But my main focus is to get into Texas and then maybe branch into Mexico if, if that opportunity arises it, itself. All right, so this is this is a question to just pop up. Mexico, you not being a huge flyer, Lucha Libre, um, why? It's just a goal with me because, uh, man, there's I feel like there's some money to be made in Mexico for. Yeah, and there, there's some there good really matches is. to be had for sure. Yeah, and there's a deep history as well. I For didn't sure. know if you had somebody pinpointed that you're you're calling out right off the bat or anything like that. No, not yet. I feel like I'm not to that level, but it, it, you're probably gonna be calling me out after this. I'm sure. <laughs> um, in uh, in NCWO, 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 what are some goals? Uh, tag team titles because on January twenty second, you know that's something. But do you do you want them all? Do you want the chosen influence to have you know every title there? And of course, that's going to be a yes. But you know, start little, go big, or just get one and run the show as tag team champions for the whole year. Uh, yeah, our main goal right now is to win those tag belts. I mean, um, also, I would love to get that world heavyweight championship that they just got world recognition with so who who do you think is ready now i'm going to stir the pot big time for you uh this is what they call locker room hanging shit um who's your biggest concern in that triple threat match Ooh, see um i would want to say the uh Wesley Crane with Tommy Dean seems like our biggest threat because they have that experience and they they're veterans of the ring, so they they know what they're doing as well. I mean, I feel like we know what we're doing as well. And uh, Dominic Whitehart and Tino Valentin was going to be a good match in that triple threat. But Tino is actually hurt now, so he's being replaced with somebody else. And oh. I can't quite remember his name. So it's not a true tag team then? Right. So they're already, just put them to the wayside. They're going to have their own issues because they've never teamed before. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. And they don't have the, the love and camaraderie like you and the cheer captain do. Right. We're We're definitely, I feel like we're definitely meant to be... A tag team, and I feel like we're going to be great at this. So yeah, I agree. Two two clashing styles makes a perfect tag team. I, I will wave that flag a hundred percent of the time, all the time. Uh, serious question times. I, I asked it to Robin as a, a stigmatism in professional wrestling that if you could erase and get rid of, or um, a concern that you see in professional wrestling, you know, what, what, if you could change this big thing that's in wrestling, what would you change? Oh man, that's a tough question right there. Yeah. For a, uh, for a young buck like you, 
but you could be the one, you know, waving the flag, starting this whole different culture in wrestling because uh, we're nerds in wrestling. I'm a mark, but you're a bigger mark than me because you got into wrestling. And there's people that think we're just stupid altogether, and they're wrong. We're not. But how do we get them to uh, appreciate us? It, it, because I always say wrestling's for everybody, you know, across the board. Where are you? Right, I definitely agree with you there that wrestling is for everybody. I feel like if we just cut out the negative comments towards each other, I feel like that would be the best bet in all of us because it it would just help us all if we stopped sh- shitting on each other. If you get if you get what I mean, no, I yes, I do because. All right, let's throw it this way. Uh, I love AEW. I'm a huge AEW nerd. I love NWA. I watch WWE. It's my not my favorite at all right now, but I still watch it because that's what I've grown up with. So it gives me that history. And do I think they're doing the right thing now? No, I think they're goddamn horrible. But as a podcast, as a sense of, like, an influence or anything like that, I'm not going to completely say Seth Rollins is a complete jackass. He's doing what he's told to do right now. If you don't like it, guess what? There's 85 other hours of professional wrestling out there per week that you can watch. Go watch something else. So that's what I, I understand. That's kind of what I swung that you are saying. Like, nobody needs to shit on what Rollins is doing if you don't like it compared to what Nick Aldis is doing, essentially. They could be doing the same thing. You just don't like Seth Rollins. Right. And th- that's definitely a big issue there is most people are just shitting on it because it's with WWE or AEW. Right. Right. I don't care about ratings. I- as long as they're entertaining me. Luke, I don't care if you don't like Britt Baker. I love Britt Baker. If you don't like Thunder Rosa, okay, you don't like Thunder Rosa. You love you you love Charlotte, okay. We all can have differences, but we still love professional wrestling. Exactly. So one of the another thing I want to bring up that uh, Luke, I'm going to ask you because last week we talked with Malik about um, women's professional wrestling in, in Oklahoma. Um, have you heard any horrible feedback that everybody in Oklahoma now hates Mark at Can Crushers? Because I called out a lot of people, uh, and I said they need to wake the hell up because the women are crushing it across the board. Spoiler, uh, my match of the year was Britt Baker against Thunder Rosa in that Lights Out sanction match in March. They told the best story of the year. They carried the pandemic. Am I hated because I said Oklahoma needs more women wrestling? It'll get more pops. It'll get it'll get you and Malik more money as well. For sure, I I definitely agree with you on that. That we do need more women wrestling in Oklahoma, and I don't think I've heard any negative feedback coming your way or yet anybody saying anything negative towards you. But yeah, I definitely agree with you that match of the year was. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa in that Lights Out match. It was a very good match. I loved it. It was amazing in my opinion. Yeah. And I don't see why women don't take the forefront of wrestling because it they need to, in my opinion. They do. They do. It, it, and it's weird that, you know, talking with Malik last week, and if you guys haven't known, um, this is like a three-part story with uh, Oklahoma. Is they're all intermingled together. Um... Why do you think, because I asked Malik the same thing, why do you think that the the wrestling for women isn't on the same par in Oklahoma as it is, like, Pennsylvania, we we have tons, Britt came from Pennsylvania, I will wave Britt's flag forever, she came from 25 miles away from me, I know Britt, we have Ray Lynn, We we have a ton of people, Lady Frost that just signed with Impact, all of them came from, you know, my neck of the woods. Pittsburgh's big, but Oklahoma's a goddamn state. Well, you know, why Why are they so far behind? Right, and I definitely feel like in Oklahoma there's just not enough women wrestling. Because I want to say there's only like uh, maybe eight women wrestlers in Oklahoma. I can't name them off the top of my head, but there's not just not that many in this state to 
kind of come up with a women's division. Do you think that it, I'll call out, you know, Thunder Rosa since she has Mission Pro, which is really close to you guys. Do you think her doing a show and, you know, having some of her students there, but also like blowing it out of the water with anybody that's like a free agent right now, like Mercedes or Chelsea or, you know, Lady Frost or, you know, big names bringing just a women's show to Oklahoma one time. Do you think that would open eyes? Because I, I know there's little girls in Oklahoma that are clamoring to get into it. I would think. Yeah, and I would think the same thing as well. If if one of those big names come in and just kind of open the eyes of the women in this state, I feel like it would definitely help. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I need to get somebody, you know, we had Robin the ref on, and we know she's training to be a professional wrestler as well, but I need to get uh, in this 10-part series that apparently we're going to do, which is okay. I, I love it because I'm learning more about you guys as well. I, I need to reach out to some uh, wrestler, a female wrestler from Oklahoma and have her on the show to get her thoughts and all that as well. So if you can help me out, because Malik didn't do anything for me, but maybe you can help me out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll I'll have uh, Miss Vegas uh, message you and and try and get on here. And that she, she's she's a trip, so you're gonna have a fun time with her. Yeah, <laughs> she's got a serial talk too. I already heard that as well. Uh, yeah, she'll, she'll definitely have an input on that. So of course, of course. All right, so what's the best advice that you got? Because you're hanging with Charlie Haas. You went to the Good Brothers Seminar. What kind of best advice did you get from one or both of them that's really changed your outlet on uh, the wrestling forecast for your foreseeable future? Right. Um, So Charlie Haas has mentioned, um, let's say, if you're working heel and um, there's – that one person in the crowd that's uh, reacting with you and kind of talking shit to you and stuff like that, go back to them, talk shit to them, and then have the baby face like cheer towards them. It's like, yeah, just kind of react with them, whoever's reacting the most to you in the ring. And then the Good Brothers, everything they had was good feedback. So if you can get a chance to do a seminar with them, I would definitely recommend doing a seminar with those guys. Yeah. Those, those guys, no disrespect to Charlie Haas, true legends in one tag team wrestling. And they both can go solo as well and just blow a a match out of the water. So yeah, completely underrated. For sure. I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah. All right. Uh, some of the fun questions that I, that I also like to ask. Um, your dream match. I know you're young in, into the business and all that, but I always like, and I always do the caveat of um, who, where, and a stipulation that you like to have a match with. And you're not allowed to say Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I have to say I want to have um, – Brian Danielson in any type of match anywhere. I just want to work him. That's my dream match right there. Okay. AEW Dark or Elevation right now would easy happen. Yes. But you don't care where. You don't care. Do you want to go with 60? Do you, do you want to, you know, a specialty match? Yeah. I'm, I would hope like an Iron Man match type, maybe 30 minutes to 60 minutes. Just yeah. kind of going and seeing what happens, basically. He's he's essentially, and I'm going to probably get hate for this, but he's essentially your new Kurt Angle then, right? Since he's so technical and we've seen a different outlook of Brian Danielson compared to Daniel Bryan six months ago. Yes, for sure. I, I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, This is one of the ones that uh, when... I forgot when we were talking personally, if you were stranded on an Island with only two people, not including your wife, because she would hopefully be there. Who are the two people in the world that you want to be stranded on an Island with? Oh, that's, that's a good one right there, man. I'd have to say one of them would be Malik. He's pretty cool to be around with. And then, um, 
Miss Vegas also because she's. It would just be a good time. It wouldn't be stranded on an island. We would just be on vacation, basically. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is, is your wife all right with Miss Vegas? Yeah. So, um, I mean, she she's also engaged too. So. Okay. Good. Just making sure. I mean, because I, I don't know if I would say to my wife, "Hey, I want to be stranded on the island with." Chelsea Green and Hangman Page, so me and Hangman can drink together, and then me and Chelsea can, you know, hang out. You know, at Cardona would kick my ass, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, I probably wouldn't yeah, say I, that out of my voice, saying, you know, I want to be stranded on an island with a woman. Right. Just saying. See, you, you caught me, because you said my wife was going to be there also. Well, I said not counting your wife. Like, I know you would pick your wife, because I would, uh -huh. uh, because you're married, you, you know the right thing to say that, yes, I would pick my wife to be there as well, but we were on a three-hour tour with Gilligan's Island, and just the three of us survived. What three people, you and two other people. So now you say somebody else, a woman... So uh, I apologize that I didn't want to get you in trouble. No, you're not going to get me in trouble. So. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Um, all right. I don't know. Th this has been a bigger dumpster fire than than I thought because at one point I'm scared of you, then I love you because you like fruity pebbles, and you're trolling me, and we're all over the place. But uh, I'm wishing you well. On January 22nd at McAllister, Oklahoma, to get those tag titles. But this is your time. This is your time to tell everybody where they can follow you. And, you know, do you have merch to sell? Is it upcoming? What's going on with you here in the near future? Where else are you going to be besides that January 22nd show? Yeah, tell everybody that you need to do better on Instagram as well. You're going to hate me. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need to do better on Instagram. I'm, like you said, I'm on Instagram. Uh, you can find me as Luke Richmond on Instagram, Facebook. I might be getting a Twitter pretty soon, but I'm not. Uh, don't. In Twitter sucks. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, I agree with you on that. But. There's just so much hate and spewing bleh on there. I hate my Twitter account, but I keep it just to keep it. And I'm, I'm also working on getting on ProWrestlingTees.com to start selling shirts and getting out there with some merchandise. Nice. So that's if they follow you on Facebook, that's uh, essentially the best place to go right now. Uh, yes. Yeah. You don't have a TikTok? I could see you having a TikTok of, of doing some stuff, though, too. No, I, I tried getting on TikTok, and it's, it's just not for me, so I'm gonna stick to facebook and instagram that's probably a good idea that's probably really a good idea where else are you gonna be besides uh mcallister yes um january 8th i'm gonna be in top of texas and i'm working on getting some more bookings in january so if you follow me on facebook you can keep up with me on that okay there you go anything else you want to bring up any anything that's a skeleton in my closet because you trolled me for most of the show, but that's all right. <laughs> no, that, that's about it for me, man. All right, Luke. I, 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 unfortunately, I had a fun time talking to you, but I just I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm being set up. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I had a blast, dude. I really did. Uh, we'll have you on again in, in the near future uh, prior to me and the family coming out to uh, Oklahoma and see all you guys, all right? Yep, that sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Luke Richmond, one half of the Chosen Influence tag team from NCWO Wrestling in Oklahoma. Again, their big show is January 22nd at McAllister, Oklahoma. I believe it's the J.I. Stipe Center that you can go and check out that professional wrestling there. Do you think he was trolling me a little bit? I just don't know. 
I, I don't know. Nonetheless, uh, Luke and I talked a little bit after the podcast, and we had a great time. Luke is good. Support indie wrestling, guys, because it's people like Robin and Luke and Malik and more and more indie stars that we're going to get on the show that make wrestling fun. Yeah, we had a great time in this podcast. It was a blast. Go out and support all of them, as I said. Again, guys, you can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, all those ones. We have our own website where you can buy merch as well. It is cancrushers 69 dot wixsite.com backslash can crushers head over there you can find all our podcasts and everything we've done in our five seasons everything's there so you can you can listen to the likes of ricky morton or gilberg or the list goes on and on and on that you can listen to the spotlights you can relive some uh Old school weekly shows, if you want to, from every co-host that I've ever had here on Can Crushers, along with a lot of other craziness. Send me some emails, cancrusher69 at gmail.com. If you're a talent, you want to come on the show to make fun of me as well, that's awesome. I will love it. Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Or slide into the DMs on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram We'll get you set up after the first of the year. January is filling up. I'm really super excited to see where this whole trip takes me. So, again, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. This is the last podcast of 2021. Yeah, season six starts Sunday. Remember, guys, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. <laughs>